2024 GDP coming in at 5.3% year on year, where the Reuters poll was expecting a slowdown. Mind you, they were expecting this to be the slowest quarter, first quarter since uh, 2023. But that hasn't happened because they have actually surprised to the upside 5.3%, a positive number for Q1 2024 GDP out of China. And on a Q1Q basis as well, there's been stability as the Reuters poll was expecting the number to be a growth of 1.4%, whereas the reported number has come in at 1.6%. They have revised their Q4 2023 GDP forecast to 1.2% quarter-on-quarter versus 1% quarter-on-quarter. So a bit of an upward revision for the data in the past as well. I want to quickly mark what's happened with the, the activity indicators, the economic indi indicators as well. March retail sales has come in at 3.1%, slightly disappointing. It's a miss. It's a clear miss versus Reuters expecting that number to be a growth of 4.6%. We are also looking at Jan March fixed asset investment coming in at 4.5% year on year, whereas the Reuters poll was expecting that number to be a 4.1% number. So all that money flowing into infrastructure and creation of fixed assets is perhaps helping the region. Finally, industrial output coming in at 4.5% year on year with the Reuters expectation running at 6%. So industrial output is a miss. Retail sales is a miss, which of course ties into the consumption story. A fixed asset investment is an outperform and more importantly, the GDP number uh, over every period, year on year, quarter on quarter, and for the backdated uh, Q4 number, has come in higher than expectation and has been revised higher. I think I just need to pull up one more data point, which is the unemployment uh, rate. The jobless rate nationwide has come in at 5.2% for, uh, for the month of March. This is nationwide. And I think for the 31 major cities, that number comes in at 5.1%. Now, we're getting a lot of, lot of data, um, uh, the breakdown, really, uh, from all of those headline indices and numbers reported, but I think we should just quickly touch upon what this means for the market reaction going right now. Yeah, well, we're actually seeing a little bit of weakness. You might not necessarily see it reflected on those hot boards, but I'm looking at, for example, the China X off by 2.95% versus the minus 25 that it was prior because industrial output minus 0.08% on month, retail sales plus 0.2.6% on month. That is that is soft as soft can be. But in terms of the broader market reaction, you continue to see this sell down coming through. Look at the Jakarta comp. That's off by around about 3% in the early going, but it is coming back online, I believe, from a holiday. But in terms of the ASX, the cost be seeing some pretty significant sell down. The Nikkei 225 off by around about 1.8%. And there is a lot of, perhaps I would suggest, and this is my suggestion, a lot of leverage getting undone in the system because you just have to look at the rate settings. You have to look at the defensive nature with which they are trying to, to keep the yen from weakening even further despite those yawning gap yield differentials. A lot of T-bills yet again selling down in the Asian session. So it's going to be a very interesting, very interesting US session at the same time considering that we are seeing this wide-scale selling and far outweighing what we did get over there stateside.